Hi, I'm Hodai Dries. When was the last time you went to a library? My guess is that you go to the library less often than the people who didn't have the world's information at their fingertips. When we, when we think about the internet, one important piece of it is a search engine. When you can just search through a couple of terms and finish your research paper, maybe you're trying to learn more about a new subject, you suddenly start to understand why when data is just sitting around in a library or in a single book, it's not as useful as when it's brought uh, right to you, right when you need it. When search engines came about, they didn't magically produce new information. Alta Vista didn't hire a bunch of content producers to make you suddenly smarter. Yahoo, maybe they did later on, but initially didn't hire a bunch of writers so they could produce content for you so that you could learn. What they were really doing is leveraging all the existing information that we have and giving it to the individual. Search engines augmented the human ability to access information and made us faster at anything that we were doing. Now when I say the word disruption, I'll bet at least some of your minds are going to things like holograms and hovercrafts, or really anything from the Jetsons. <laughs> we often equate disruption with futurism or invention. But sometimes, and in, I would argue in some of the most important areas, disruption is actually quiet. It's, it's thinking about areas in a different way. Google, everyone's favorite search engine, beat out its competitors by looking at how it was presenting information. It beat out its biggest competitor when it comes to email, Hotmail at the time, by just offering people more space. Google wasn't actually inventing anything. They were, for all intents and purposes, a means to an end. Now I'm gonna get to the part that I'm really excited about. I play in the world of healthcare. And healthcare is a prickly issue, especially in Canada. You know, it's our favorite thing to rub in all the Americans' faces, that we have free healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also a system that is creaking at the wheels. It's unsustainable. We don't know why it keeps, wait it keeps us waiting for months to get into a simple surgery. We don't know why we don't get diagnosed properly the first time. But if you think about this complex, publicly funded infrastructure, and individuals like you and me going through it, what needs to be perfect is when we're passed from one agent to the next. So when communication happens, maybe your family doctor is referring you to a specialist. Maybe that specialist is referring you to a surgeon. And that communication today in 2017 happens via the very reliable fax machine. <laughs> in fact, I would venture to say that the healthcare industry is keeping the fax industry alive. Often, the fix that is proposed when it comes to the broken healthcare system is to put in more frontline workers. Why don't we just add doctors and nurses? Can't get into surgery fast enough? Great, I'll just hire more surgeons. But what if we dug deeper than that? What if the issue isn't we don't have enough resources, the issue is we're misusing and misallocating the resources that we do have? So we don't necessarily have to spend billions of dollars either hiring more people or trying to come up with them some new infrastructure to usher healthcare into the 21st century. A simple way to make healthcare sustainable and equitable to all of us is to leverage something that lots of industries have leveraged to date, data. The data we capture about our own health doubles in amount every single year. We are capturing more digital health data about ourselves than ever before. But where does this data live? I want to talk about how we're actually living through a digital health inflection point right now. If you think about it, every hospital you've been to, every executive care clinic you belong to, every walk-in clinic you've been to, all of them are capturing data on you. They're capturing maybe you're just your vitals, Maybe some of them are running uh, blood tests. Maybe they're doing some imaging. But they're capturing all this data about you. And it's powerful stuff. It's not just stuff you've given them and fill out, filling out all those boring forms at the beginning. 
It's about whether your cholesterol tends to trend upwards. It's important information, but it's invisible to you. All of that information, really powerful, sits separately in all these different silos and all the different clinics and healthcare practitioners you've ever been to. What if it didn't have to live separately? What if we could harness the power of all of your health data in one go? We often do this when we travel. So if you were, if you were to travel, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably going to take your passport. You want to get in and out of places. You're probably going to carry some traveler's checks just in the event that you need more cash. But what if you got into a health episode? What if you were on vacation in Thailand and, heavens forbid, something went wrong? I guarantee you the Thai ER doctor won't know what you're fatally allergic to. So it's so amazing that we take such pains to put together all of our passports and travel documents and traveler's checks. But when it comes to our health, we travel completely blind. What if you had access to all of your own health data? Today, you have access to your bank account on your phone. Heck, you can even look at the last two years of all your coffee orders on Starbucks. <laughs> you have that right at your fingertips. But most of you probably don't know what your blood group is. Most of you probably don't remember the last time you got your tetanus shot. And that's worrying. Now let's take it a step further. Say we've powered every individual with access to their own information. What if we group that together? Search engines, by looking at trends of what people are searching for, can tell us what the world is thinking. If you think about harnessing the power of the masses and their health data, if we could tap into that, what if we could actually follow epidemics in real time? What if we could instantaneously place people in clinical trials instead of waiting months to get there? I think when we tap into this really powerful data of healthcare of the masses, we can actually see how the world is feeling. Thank you very much. <laughs>